You're listening to the Inquisitive Wren Podcast, the show that brings you philosophical ponderings of your life from a bird's eye view. Now, here's your host, Shah. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Inquisitive Wren Podcast. I'm Shah, your host. Thank you so much for joining me again today. And to new subscribers on both Apple and YouTube, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, But please leave us comments as well, some feedback on the interviews and our guests as well. If you've worked with different people that I've interviewed, please leave a comment and it would be really nice. I'm sure my guests would really appreciate it as well. So today on the podcast, we have Gillian McMichaels, who is a coach. So she began her career in human resources. I had a brief, if you blinked, you'd missed it. Uh, I had a very brief, brief career in human resources, although when I worked as a area sales manager, I did recruit staff for all the stores in London and throughout. Uh, but I did work at a recruitment agency once. It was very brief because I had accepted a position uh, on the NHS and I was just waiting to start. Uh, because it was new and I was waiting to start. So I took another role and it was fantastic. I absolutely enjoyed it. So we talk a little bit about that. But she began her career in human resources where she first honed her skills, her mentoring skills, and she discovered uh, a, a lifelong love of teaching. A, a lot of people do know this, but my favorite auntie, and I can say this, my favorite, favorite aunt. Uh, was a teacher, a principal at a school and then a high school. And she was just absolutely amazing, fantastic. I used to help her grade papers and everything when I was young. So I love teaching. I suppose what I do is a bit of teaching as well. And Gillian caught my eye because she is a coach as well, but she uses traditional coaching tools and techniques to help her clients. And this includes corporate leaders, uh, personal clients, uh, even the NHS. So she's helped people discover and recognize their true potential. A lot of big corporations need that. Early in my career, a lot of you know, I did some corporate, uh, I don't know if it's coaching I could call, but certainly trouble spotting, troubleshooting for them and teaching uh, hypnotherapy techniques. Gillian's based in Edinburgh, one of my favorite cities. Uh, By 2004, she launched her own practice by designing a course and had an instant result. And then by 2010, she had some personal life changes, as, you know, many of us have. And then, unfortunately, the subsequent collapse of a shared business and a stress-induced health scare spurring her seminal solo work. So she then went solo. That year, she trained as a meditation coach. And in 2012, she qualified as a Reiki healer. You can look up some information about Reiki as well. Uh, Her book, she has her first book out, which is called Coming Home, A Guide to Being Your True Self, uh, which was published this year, has just come out. It is now on the Amazon bestseller list, which is fantastic. But Gillian approached me, her team approached us, which was really nice. So my little call to action in in my podcasts are working because I'm getting some requests. Um, I'm interviewing somebody else next week that reached out to us as well. So that's really nice. But I think it's because we all share similar either histories or trainings or, you know, in our personal development or our professional development. But today I speak with Gillian about her book, her work, and also her mantra, which I love. She likes to say, show up and shine. So let's talk to Gillian. I'm really excited to speak to her today. Welcome, Gillian. Gillian, lovely to see you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. I'm really exciting in having a chat. So thank you so much for having me on. My pleasure. So we've got a bit to talk about today. I would like to delve into your world just for a bit. So Mm -hmm. now this is interesting. You've had an interesting start in um, human resources. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so gosh, many, many years ago now, so pre 
2004. My background was I started off in recruitment and then moved into a more generalist HR role and then moved into the latter part of my HR career, focusing on really people development and learning and development. And I suppose that's where I fell upon coaching and um, really kind of got the bug of wanting to work with people in a different way. So, yeah, so I, you know, I, I was really, I suppose my passion was really about supporting people and helping them be the, the best they can be. Excellent. Well, I can see that transition. I had a very brief stint in recruitment. It was just a transition part. I was waiting on a role on the NHS and I took a role for about five months. It was great. I loved it. It was a place in High Wycombe. But I can see the coaching part in recruitment because once you start getting people into jobs, yeah. you know, their confidence builds and I, it was it was a, such a high. So I can understand that. And then I, I did really well with a particular law firm. So they kept asking for me to find people for them. So it really does boost you up. Yes. And I suppose I can see the transition into coaching, you know, boosting people up, incre- helping them to increase their confidence. But I would like to be clear for people out there, if they're looking for, maybe they're looking at their life, they're doing some reassessment, especially this time of year. And they may be thinking, you know, I, I may need a little bit of insight. What is it that you get when you see a coach? Well, it depends on the kind of coach you are. But if you're working with me, for example, is it's highly likely that you should have some transformational or transformative experience. So meaning that what we do is we, we we break down the current reality. We look at what's happening, what's going on for you at this moment in time. And then we will work with you to figure out, you know, how we can get you from where you are now to where you want to be. And that might sound simple. And in many ways... It is because you're helping somebody on their journey of self-discovery um, to get from where they are now to where they want to be. However, so taking somebody on a journey of where they want to be from where they from where they are now to where they want to be. But on the back of that, we have all these other things such as self-sabotaging tendencies, fears, blockers, and obstacles to success. And so part of that process of taking somebody through a transformational coaching journey is to really help them understand. What's getting in their way? Oh. What's stopping them? How they can progress? And to try and help them really with sustainable strategies for future success beyond the coaching conversation. Yes, excellent. So that means, though, uh, that people are coming to you because they've identified within their life or business or whatever it is, yeah. as you said, depending on the type of coaching you're looking for, yeah. they've identified an area of their life or in their life that they think they need some help. They want to move forward. They want to transform something in their life. Yeah. So what types of things do people bring up to you? Gosh, um, so many different things. It could be as simple from, I want to change careers. I want to get a new job. Um, it could be around relationships. Um, you know, maybe they're unsatisfied or unfulfilled in the relationships that they've got or maybe just their relationship needs a bit of a you know a new kind of lease of life you know it doesn't have to be that you need to part to get some coaching you know um mainly though I would say that most people come to coaching because in some way shape or form they've lost themselves in you know in some way and they may be stuck they know something needs to change but they're not quite sure exactly what it is. And so therefore they would come to a coach to discover what that is. And so I spend a lot of time mainly, you know, I've got mixed clients, male and female, but I would say majority female who are looking to reconnect with themselves, uh, to understand themselves, to um, build their confidence and self-esteem and worthiness to 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 shine brighter than perhaps than they've been doing and to to maybe overcome some of those um that past conditioning that might be keeping them in that pattern of behavior that perhaps is no longer serving them very well right and so does that mean you're looking at their thoughts what they believe about themselves and and then yeah looking at that okay absolutely so mindset um emotional state and actually, sometimes in, in coaching, I tend to like look at kind of maybe the four cornerstones of, of wellness to help clients in particular, because what we, you know, as you described there, what we 
what we say and what we think we believe and what we believe we become. And so therefore it's trying to help clients with that narrative and the story, the way that they communicate with themselves. Mm. And in a way I try to help or support my clients learn to befriend themselves and to treat them as they would treat their best friends. I like that because it reminds me of that quote, uh, be the person you would want to meet. Yes, exactly. Now, do you, would you want to meet you? kind of thing you know now I would yes I think I've done plenty of work on myself over the years and I've been through a whole kind of journey but yeah I think I think I'd be all right as a person to meet these days yeah I would it's a good question because you know as you say sometimes in our lives we think oh I could I could change that I could change this but I like the way you describe that because I think it's helpful to be clear with people coaching is not counseling Yes, it's that's not right. psychotherapy. It's not therapy. And if you're looking for that, great. It's all out there. But if you want to effect some change sort of now, if you've got an area, I'll use your example, let's say you want to change your job or your yep. career. Let's say you want to make a transition. You're not quite sure what. Therapy is not, it, it can help you with that, but coaching may be a bit more aligned in helping you with strategies and you know goal setting and you know focusing on that and therapy will look at your past most yes. mm-hmm. um which can be unsettling for a lot of people so i coach i'm mean, not co- I, well i'm a coach but i also supervise coaches and one of the problems mm-hmm. that coaches often bring up in supervision is ooh, a client's brought up something that's happened with such and such What do I do? And I always say, you know, you need to signpost them on. Signpost them to counseling. You're not a trained counselor. Don't even attempt that because you could unsettle someone and you don't know how to deal with it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I would, I would I totally agree with that. Actually, and I think you're right. I think, I think, I think though most people, I think these days, I mean, of course, I think there's uh, certainly since pandemic, there is definitely um, some grey areas coming through. I'm also a coach, supervisor, coach, mentor as well, and and I think when I'm supervising too, I would, you know, I always go back to that contracting question around, and I think that's very important when you start working with somebody is is how do we want to work, and you also make sure that coaching is the right intervention. Um, it's not something else that's required absolutely in a way i mean i always tell you know people that it's a good thing that that's come up you know it's a good thing so don't feel bad that you can't help in that area it's good because the work you've done up to now has done something you know so that's brilliant but you do want to stay within the contract you do want to stay within your boundaries and and not yeah go over that exactly so it's good to define what coaching is. I like the aspect of coaching for goal setting. So do you often outline for people? Do you work on goals with people or do they come up with with most of it? Well, I mean, yes. Well, in the true sense, obviously, I mean, I've been coaching now for 20 years. And so you know, in its truest sense, you would expect clients to um, to self-direct so obviously we provide the space we provide the environment for that success you know for it to be a healthy successful trusting conversation but our job is as we know is is, as coaches is not to um tell somebody what they should be doing or how they should be doing our job is to elicit those answers Mm. from within and so therefore absolutely we would be um helping the client articulate that goal and then helping them work towards it um you know, some goals I work with clients where some goals are, are kind of big life, you know, life goals and some goals can be more practical. Um, but the but as I said, for me personally, I quite like to, we, I tend to work transformation with my clients. So from that perspective, you know, there would be that transformational shift that takes place uh, regardless of what it is their goal might be or where they might want to go. Yeah. Excellent. Because I would assume that some people come to you, they, they want to see you, but they don't know where to start. They don't yeah. know. What they don't even know what they want. They just know they want to change. Yes. Yeah, so exactly. If someone's thinking that, if someone is listening to this and saying, do you know, I, I could do it with a bit of coaching. What would you say to them? I think the first question would be is to have a think about what what outcome you would like. So at the end of that process, and for me, it's not just about, you know, 
So for example, it's not just about losing weight or getting a new job. It's really about how you want to feel within yourself at the end of that process. So how do you really want to feel? And then you can start thinking about what you want to accomplish, because I think it's more of that sense of what do you want to be different? What, 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 genuinely do you want to be different than what it is at the moment and also ask yourself well what things are working for me what things are serving me well and what what basically is not serving me well and if those are the things that you then would like to explore then let's come up with a list of what those things might be so I think there's some kind of definitely some thinking that can be done beforehand but not everybody can find the answers to those questions but I would encourage people just to at least ask the question and to see what unfolds at least then you can start preparing yourself for a coaching relationship and a coaching process never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button right now thank you for your support you make this podcast possible now back to the show excellent and what I think you've outlined there is it's a, a, you know a partnership. You'll yes. be, you'll be looking at some things, but they've also got to come up with with something. You can't magically conjure something up for them. They've got Correct. to participate. They have got to put the time in, the effort in, and think about it. Yes, absolutely, mm. absolutely. You're right, absolutely. Because a lot of people come to even counselling for they think everybody's going to solve their problems. And with a coach, a life coach or business coach, whatever, it's the same sometimes. People think, yeah. right, I'm here for coaching. I've turned up and, okay, what do I do? <laughs> what do I need to do? Tell me. Yeah. R- rule my life. <laughs> yes. Um, but we touched upon the past a bit. So I wanted to ask you, if you could live in any time, past or present, what would it be? Present. Ah, okay. Some people do say that. Um, I've had other people say, oh, I'd like to go back to the 1920s and see what prohibition was like. And all. Lots yeah. of exciting times we've had in this world. There, there are. But I think for me, um, obviously, I'm a meditation mindfulness teacher and I do a lot with the Vedic tradition. Uh, so Eastern philosophies, I suppose, um, around living and lifestyle and wellness and so things and I think I think for me I think it's lovely to look back on times and experience times and and maybe yeah maybe if I was to be an adventure in the past maybe you know I'm not quite sure when I would like to go back to but I do feel that I, I do feel like living in the present is most probably one of my happiest moments and so I think that's why I've answered that question in that way because I think sometimes we can get caught too much in the past or too much in the future and I think for me I think if we can try to live in the here and the now then realistically that is the only time we can live but I get your point about your question I think I might have misinterpreted your question actually so you answered it perfectly I think what you just said makes sense Mm -hmm. you've answered it because you would like to just yeah stay in the moment yeah Yeah. exactly Mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind going back a little bit to the like 1940s just to look at the fashion <laughs> that would be good wouldn't it yes <laughs> fashion up close and you know a chaparelli and chanel and oh yeah that'd be pretty cool that would be nice actually yeah <laughs> i'd want to come back you see <laughs> but i i'm with you there you know mindfulness and meditation is beautiful stuff but sometimes it's nice to dream <laughs> um so with your work, and I, I'm sure you're very busy, how do you balance, you know, life work balance? Because it's something we teach our clients. So how do you do it? Yeah, it's a really good question. So I'm, I, I have, I suppose what I've done over the years is I've created a lifestyle routine for myself. So I've spent quite a bit of time on this over the years and tweaking it and changing it and but for me, I try to incorporate exercise every day. I meditate um, every morning. I exercise every morning. Um, that might just be going out for a walk. Um, it could be going on the spin bike. It could be, met, you know, doing yoga. It's a range of different things. Could even be going for a swim. Um, but I try to do that. And I think, I think what I, what more than anything else, um, I think, well, I think realistically, it's a challenge when you have your own business. And I think most coaches would say the same, um, that actually it is quite difficult when you are trying to grow your business or get your business off the ground. It's a lot of time, effort, love kind of gets plowed into that. And 
you know, at the end of the day, when we have most most business owners always want to deliver a good service and don't let people down. And so I think I think there's always going to be that challenge Mm -hmm. for most people. Um, I think for me, as I said, it's it's about incorporating exercise, making sure I sleep well, I go to bed at a good, decent time, usually 1030 most nights. Um, You know, don't over drink, don't overindulge, have kind of it doesn't, you know, maybe it sounds a bit boring, but but have a balanced life, because I think when it's, it can be all or nothing, it can go from one extreme to the other. And I think for me, um, having that routine really helps me have have a balance. And I think that does help. But it's also about knowing boundaries as well. When, you know, knowing when to when to stop, when to know what belongs to you versus somebody else. And and so it's a, it's a mixture. But I think I think one of the things that I learned a long time ago was really trying to get that universal law of giving and receiving. Mm-hmm. and making sure that you get that balance of doing that well. Right. Excellent. Yeah, sometimes, as you say, you need to just relax, take in a deep breath, you know, let it all go. Bring exactly. it in. <laughs> exactly. And grounded, centered. It, it's such a beautiful practice. And if people could start to develop more practice, I think, in their lives, routine yes. in their lives, it, it does settle you. A bit. Absolutely. I think it does. And I think, you know, if you think about it, you know, everybody is very, very busy. We don't have a lot of free time available, especially those who are working, got families and all sorts of different things, you know. And so I think if you can give yourself some time, even if it might mean you're getting out of bed a little bit earlier for morning um, or making sure that you get your bedtime routine sorted out, um, I think can be really beneficial to starting to just give yourself a bit of self-care um a little bit of um yeah so that can help your overall wellness as a whole excellent now that brings us to purpose because a lot of your work you talk about purpose and then i'm going to talk about your book but what is purpose what is how do you find your purpose it's a lot of the work that you do so if somebody's saying you know i i feel like i talked about this on another podcast sometimes with spiritual readings people Mm -hmm. come to me and say I feel like I'm off purpose. And I always say, that's not possible. Wherever you are, that's a part of it all. So what do you mean by purpose and how can people get on purpose? Yeah, so I suppose it's more about helping people um, understand, you know, maybe what they might be here to do. That's the bigger piece, I suppose, around purpose. So I work with a lot of people who are, you know, maybe they're in a career or they're maybe, you know, kind of feeling again that maybe they've just been, because I, I think, I think we sometimes do get derailed in life. You know, we, we, we have things. And of course, all of those experiences are very, very helpful and useful mm-hmm. and are required to help us on our journey. Um, but sometimes, you know, some people can have that journey and it's dead easy for them. It's A to B. Others, they take the scenic route, you know, and, and, and it goes off in different tangents. And I think sometimes in life, you know, I mean, Mark Twain said, what, the, the, the best day of your life or the most important day of your life is when you find out the reason why in terms of why you're here. And I think most people these days are looking for their purpose or to feel some sort of connection to something bigger than themselves and so I suppose purpose can be seen as something more spiritual it could be more practical around what am I here to do in my career Um, but also what can I give back to society do I need would I like to leave a legacy or anything of those lines on on the, the 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 smaller approach that's kind of maybe the bigger approach but on the smaller approach to purpose then it's most probably more around helping people find purpose in what they're doing so you know they might be um you know kind of mom or dad or whatever or co-parenting whatever it might be but so what is the purpose in my role as a parent you know what is my purpose in the role as a coach what is my purpose as 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 you know as a friend and I don't think it necessarily always has to be so big Mm -hmm. I think we can find purpose in in a lot of things I mean I recently, well, saying recently, just before pandemic, actually, um, I did a talk to a bunch of um, NHS um, doctors, quite senior kind of consultants. And out of maybe the 100 people that were in the room, 
I would say that most probably 60% said that they'd lost their purpose. They'd lost the connection with why they were doing the work that they were doing. And that really struck me um, to say, well, gosh, you know, these people have been trained, they've been trained all their lives to do this work, but how easy it is to, to lose that connection. And I think, and, and I think, so when I think about purpose, I think it's about helping people connect back with either themselves, but also maybe the work that they do and to be purposeful in their life. Yes. Yes, a junior doctor was saying not long ago that they were quitting, they were leaving. Now they've worked all that hard, but they were FY1, so first year doctor, um, and they were leaving. And it, the main reason was that they didn't feel respected or they didn't feel, and so everybody will, fight. It doesn't. but it doesn't mean she was off, she's off purpose. It means, yeah, because something else has come up now. And I think, you know, like you were putting it, the bigger picture, and then there's the, you know, the microcosm, I think. That part is the everyday life, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes your purpose would be sticking perhaps to your routines. You know, you know yoga helps you. Yep. So why stop it? Yeah. And that's exactly. part, part of purpose as well. Yeah. Um, let's talk about your book for a moment. So congratulations, you published your very first book. That's a huge achievement, Gillian. Thank does you. Does it feel like it? Does it feel Yes, like it? it does. I mean, it was a real kind of labor of love and it's a real honest account of, of some of the things that I've been through and, and what I did to, to, to get myself out of those experiences. And I've learned from those. And so, yes, yeah, so I feel really proud. It's been an Amazon bestseller. I've just recorded the audio book that's oh, going to come out in January. So oh, yes, yeah, it's, it's really exciting. It's called Coming Home and it's a guide to being your true self. Yes. So when we talk about truth, and what's the true your true self is it your own truth or is it universal truth what do we mean by your true self yeah so i suppose i'm meaning um our true selves so so i think as i said i think as mentioned before i think you know you know when we're born you know we have this huge amount of potential we have this huge amount of um opportunity but depending on where we brought into the world and how we brought into the world and who our community is or where our community is, our families, our social interactions, and maybe even our education and, you know, and, you know, you know, higher education, if we go on to that, if not, then our, again, our environment of where we work can all have a huge impact and can, I suppose, more than anything else, um, I suppose we can start playing roles to fit in, to belong, to be liked. Yes. And I think a lot of us as human beings, because it's in our it's the human condition, is that we love a label. Yes. You know, we, we love attaching ourselves to things or people love attaching things to us. And so we start to play those roles. And of course we have those roles such as, you know, I'm a parent, I'm a, you know, I'm a daughter, you know, I'm a sister, I'm a business owner, I'm also a mom and I'm a wife. You know, of course we have those labels. But but some of those labels that, you know, such as I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough. Right. Um, you know, um, I'm this, I'm the other. That could be more negative in connotation yeah. and more less not life affirming. They have the opposite, that they're, they're life negative kind of thing. Um, then we can start believing those. And like I'm not, you know, you say to some, you know, somebody says I'm not confident enough, they will believe that they're not, they will become not confident enough because that's what they believe. And so I think the whole point of writing this book was to. I suppose was to share my journey because I'd been on a journey of self-discovery for around um, coming up for 10 years. Cause in 2010, I, I lost ev more or less lost everything. Mm -hmm. So I lost my, my, my business, my uh, first marriage, um, my home, my car, and I was left with, um, you know, everything was gone. And so, um, and that was because of recession. It was because most probably the universe was giving me a really big kick up the backside to say, wake up. Because I think what I was doing was playing a lot of roles and I'd lost myself. I lost myself being about eight years old when I was severely uh, bullied at school. And that went on for many, many years. And then bullied as an adult. Um, I had some, um, I suppose, sexual abuse, I suppose, um, when I was in my early twenties. And I played lots and lots of different roles. Um, and I don't, and I think really I'd, I'd lost who I truly was. And I was this really very happy-go-lucky young girl, 
lots of ambition, lots of confidence. And through my experiences in life, I'd lost all that. Not all of it, but, you know, I'd lost a lot of it. And um, and when I did lose everything in 2010, that was a really, it was, it was a hard, very hard experience, but a really good experience to have because it allowed me to realize that I had lost the connection with who I really was because I was playing all these different roles. I was the gregarious, you know, friend. I was the, you know, I was this, I was the other, Um, but actually I'd lost sight of who I really was. And so, so when I wrote the book and I strongly believe that my, my purpose as a coach is to help walk others back home to their true selves, Um, which means that you find your voice, you figure out who you are, you have agency over your life, not in an arrogant way, but in a really meaningful way. Um, You speak your truth, you say your truth, and you express yourself. And I think most, a lot of people, including a lot of women I know, um, don't do that because they're, and a lot of people are frightened of what will happen. What will people think of me if I say this? What will people, you know, what will people do? Will I still be light? Will I still belong? And, And I think it's about helping people find true belonging within. And is that a part of living authentically? Yes. Too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. Living, yeah, living authentically, living, you know, living um true to who you are. So honoring the whole of you. Mm. Yes, the whole, which is something we work towards in meditation as well, just taking taking things in and being open to it, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. That's quite a journey. You know, I've had similar things happen certainly to me. You know, lending huge amounts of money and I suppose somehow knowing I would never get it back, didn't get it back and ruined me kind of thing. So I've certainly had that happen to me. Um, you know, sometimes you're lucky, so you get something and you say so somebody's in need. So you, you know, but it never comes back. And it's one of those things, I don't know if, and in coaching, I suppose people come with similar things or issues that maybe have not been that big, but um, maybe divorces, separations. Um, some people have never had relationships, never been in love. Um, we look at people like musicians as well. They, they lead a life. They're born gifted but then perhaps they're now 40 and they think, oh, I'm tired of doing clubs. I'm tired of touring. I'm tired, you know, yep. there's something different more, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so everybody will have a different stage or a different purpose. And writing your book, I would think, as you explained, that was a part of your, that or is a part of your purpose yes. as well. And definitely, you're teaching yes. And showing people through your words. Yes. What was the process like as you were writing? Um, did, was it a long one? Did you, you know, was it years? Did you start? And- no, actually, it's funny. I suppose there's always been a book there. I think, you know, when I when I realized, you know, that I was um, I was going on this journey. I mean, I journaled a lot. I journaled all the time because it was a great way for me to. It was a good outlet to release my stress and to pen, you know, any pent up anger or frustration. And and actually, I used it as a tool to understand. It was so so so. I did that for quite a few years, and then obviously I started to train and become a trainer in a variety of different things. And Reiki healer, meditation mindfulness teacher, so Reiki master now, and you know all of these kind of things, and Ayurvedic practices and med- uh, mindful. Um, yoga and a whole whole load of different things to help me understand me better went through therapy as well and, and did all that um, and that was very useful to do that um, but I but I think when I sat down well did you say that you was a well you know you said before that you're kind of quite spiritual so I think so I'll share with you if it's okay and hopefully yes, it doesn't freak it doesn't help yes, freak, 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 freak this out um but I I I I went and got a reading and um out of that reading um came a little message which was you know it's about time you got that book wrote you know ah. kind of thing <laughs> so I was already thinking of doing it but but due to pandemic I was supposed to be in India to do uh, my yoga teacher training um addition you know kind of advanced coach uh, teach training and I I couldn't go so I had a full month so I thought I'm gonna sit down and write and so I did 
And then- so within a month, it needed, don't get me wrong, it needed a lot of work afterwards, but the, the first draft was done within within a month. And then um, by the September, it was picked up by a publishing company. Amazing. Absolutely yes, so it's amazing. Fantastic. Yeah. And that is being on purpose. Yes. That yeah. is yeah. being aligned. Yeah. Spirit have been telling me to get my books out for for years. I just, I've listened, but I, I can't seem to do it. I am working on it. Good, okay. you should, you should. <laughs> well, then what is the critical companion and why do we need to ditch it? <laughs> yes, good question. So critical companion for me is that voice, is that negative self-sabotaging voice. So it's for me, I, I, I labeled it as a critical companion because it's a companion that's always with you. You know, we have so many thoughts a day um, and sometimes we can't process all of those thoughts. And some of the thoughts we have today, we'll have tomorrow. But the critical companion's voice is, is always there, which is the one that says, really, can you do that? You're never going to write that book. You remember your grammar's awful. You got told at school you can't spell, you know, all of those things. It's, it's that voice that stops you from really doing what you want to do. And we all have one that resides. I suppose in a sense, it's a it's another name for the ego because the ego wants to keep us small, keep us protected, uh, keep us safe. Um, and so when we try something new or we step out of our comfort zones, that voice can easily kind of pipe up and start to send us messages, um, which make, I suppose, which make us question and start to doubt ourselves and our ability. And I suppose if you listen to that voice for too long, then again, it becomes your reality and you stay small and you stay safe and you don't try the things that you really desire and that what your heart is longing for. And we don't do that. And so the need to dump the critical voice, the critical companion is to say, well, you know, actually, we don't need it. And actually, I don't really need to listen to you. Thank you very much. But actually, I'm going to turn the volume down and I'm going to still proceed with what I want to do because otherwise we it will stop us from really reaching our potential or Absolutely. achieving anything in our lives really tends to override logic rationale in absolutely me. absolutely yeah. yeah yeah I want to just quickly go back to something you mentioned um about being bullied as an adult as well because I think this is huge uh, so many people associate bullying with childhood and with school, but actually so many adults are being bullied in work, in within their own families, by neighbors, by friends sometimes as well. So adults can be bullied. Yes, and I absolutely. hope that absolutely it doesn't matter what age you are, you can be bullied. I hope that adults who believe the other otherwise will open up their minds and accept that you could have any position in this world. It doesn't mean you're immune to being bullied. Um, no. I, 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 yeah. yeah, sorry, go, go on. No, no, go, I was go, just going to ask you your thoughts about why do you think other adults feel they need to bully people? I think any bully, whether it's a child or whether it's an adult, um, if they are doing the bullying or, you know, being cruel or mean to somebody else, being hurtful in any way, I believe, and it's just my point of view, but I believe that there is, um, they're hiding vulnerability. They're hiding um, whatever's going on. They could have had, you know, a lot of pain and hurt and trauma in their lives. Who knows what they've had or experienced? Yeah. But bullying for me is about power. I think I think people like to have control and power over a circumstance, a person, or a situation. And I suppose what happens to us when we do get bullied as youngsters or even as adults, we are giving away our personal power and, and actually allowing this to happen to us because of the fear or because of whatever has been triggered within us. And it's kind of got us into more of that child ego state rather than the adult ego state. And so when that happens, you know, in my case, I, sh I shrunk, you know, I started to shrink. I, be I did become small and I was definitely vulnerable. And I think sometimes bullies can prey upon that vulnerability of others too, because it is that that power um, and that control that they want. But I do believe it stems from past hurt and vulnerability of themselves first. Yes, I, I would agree. 
I would also say bullies feel threatened. So yes. Behind yeah. every bully is a feeling of being gone somehow, not existing, being yes. extinct. I'm saying yes. extinct, yeah. mm-hmm. being extinct. So they're afraid of not being here. They're afraid you're going to overshadow them, yeah. overcome them. They're afraid of that. And so they yeah. want to knock you down bit by bit. So yeah. um, it's awful. But yeah. you can stand up to them. And by standing up to them, uh, it gives you, it's not for them, it's more for you. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, email us at inquire at theinquisitiverin.com. That's E-N-Q-U-I-R-E at theinquisitiverin.com. Be sure to check all social media, especially the Facebook page, for new topics being discussed. And if you can contribute, please let us know so you can be a guest on the show. Now, back to the show. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think this is the whole point of the the book really as well is around, it's not just about bullying, obviously, it's about other life events and everything and how you can get yourself back on track if you have lost yourself. But I think, I think the main thing is that soon as you find your voice, yes, soon as you speak up, you express yourself in the way that you need to and want to. And that's not being rude, arrogant, cruel. It's about saying, actually, that's not acceptable. Or that isn't how I feel at this moment in time. I don't actually want to do this. You know, um, I don't want this for my dinner. It can be simple things. I would prefer to have this. It's it's about speaking up and expressing what you want, what you feel, what you need. Um, Because at the end of the day, all, you know, we all have needs that need to be met. And we can do it as long as we deliver that message in a compassionate, kind way, in a non-demanding and non-threatening way, mm-hmm. then that means that we're assertive. And, you know, that's that voice that we want to have, which means that then you won't need to put up with those things or tolerate those things anymore because that's it, it's actually not important because you are being, you're standing true to yourself and you're honoring who you are. Absolutely. And if you just watch children, they, they have it. Most of them do. You can hear them shouting, screaming, give me that, give me this, you know, don't do that, leave me alone. They really step, they know how, and bit by bit, it's dumbed down or knocked down or be quiet, don't make so much noise, sit still, do this, do that. So, yes, we come out of the womb, you know, really bolshy, you know, going out there, and then somehow... We just lose that a little bit, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it happens. Um, But then the ones who never get that are the ones running lots of corporations and some of them doing really good things. So it depends on your how you were brought up. Now, was there or is there any childhood dream that you ever had? I was thinking as I wrote down this question today, two things. One, is there any item from childhood that you still have? Gosh, any item. Well, so yeah, so I still think I've got I've got some of my my books that I read. So I've got some nursery rhyme books that I had when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Um, I still have those. Um, I did have a teddy bear, um, but I have put him to rest now because he was a bit falling to pieces and everything. But I still had, I had um, a sweep. So if you're familiar with Sooty and Sweep, I had yes, a sweep. So I had a sweep. Um, so I had, uh, I had him with me for many, many years. Um, but yeah, that's that's mainly the mo- the majority of things that I've kept. Um, oh. But yeah, you asked me what did what did you ask me what I wanted to do? Yes, and and for childhood, was there any dream that you had? You thought, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I wanted to be an actress. Uh-huh. I, would have, yeah, I really wanted to be an actress. I did a lot of am- amateur dramatics, but because of my self-doubt, that critical companion voice, although I got auditions to go to drama school and arrange for the different things, I never pursued it because I didn't believe in myself enough. Um, so I pursued, I, you know, so I, I, I did alternative things. Um, I mean, I look back now, I mean, I don't, re- I mean, you know, I, I don't regret any of that. I mean, but I think for, for many years when I was younger, I was really regretful that I didn't pursue those dreams and push forward on those, but you know, life works out in the way that it does. But, um, but yeah, I think that that was something that I always wanted to be was a, was an actress. Wow. It's fantastic yeah. though, that dream, but that was there for a reason. So I just wondered where that came from, you know, 
why an actress? Yeah, I don't know. So I think there is something, um, I actually am not quite sure the actress bit, um, where that came from. I just think I was really, I was very creative. Um, Uh I was curious. Um, I used to role play, you know, I had an invisible friend when I was younger, you know, I don't know. I was very creative and, and I loved just the, the concept of, um, being immersed in something, I think. And I really enjoyed that. And I think there was also something there about, I don't know, maybe doing something to help others mm-hmm. through enjoyment of something. I don't know. I suppose I've not really thought about it in that level of depth before, but I think I think that's certainly where where it came from. And then obviously it didn't happen, but it's so interesting because my job now, I mean, obviously like this, you know, I have my own podcast, my book and you, you know, in many ways, the, the, the teaching and training and coaching and all those things, you know, I, I, I'm kind of, that's ticking a lot of boxes for creativity and, and, helping. For other, and helping others as well. So, you know, I feel very lucky in that respect that even though I, I didn't take that road, this has given me just an enriching, if not maybe even more enriching road to, to be on. Yeah. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. So, yes. Now, yes, that brings us on to your podcast, though, and some of your other endeavors as well. What's happening? What, what's coming up? Yeah. So, so well, the, the podcast we, I've got, so I'm now in season five of my podcast yeah. and that's kind of a salute more to some of the key lessons in the coming home book. Um, season six is coming out um, in early February where I'm going back to interviewing guests and um, we talk about transformations and life challenges and obstacles and how people have overcome those. So we hear very similar to what you've done today, the story, and um, we, we, we share some of those learnings that we can share with our, uh, our, our listeners and so forth. So yeah, so the podcast is very, is very exciting. Um, and obviously I said the, the coming home audio book is coming out in the new year as well in January. So that's been really great. And alongside that, I also am focusing on retreats. I do a lot of wellness retreats because I incorporate the Eastern philosophies with, with Western living. Um, and so I do, I host four weeks of retreats in Mallorca every year. And so, yeah, so I'm looking forward to doing that again in May and June uh, next year. Fantastic. Ooh, I hope to come to one of those. <laughs> Mallorca, yes, Mallorca. Um, yeah, everybody loves Mallorca. Do you remember everybody used to go like years ago, about 10, 15 years ago? That's where every, we all went. Yes, yes. It was yeah. Ibiza and then it, Mallorca, it yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, fantastic. Ah, oh, so you are a busy lady, but those yes. retreats sound amazing. So there's, uh, I would assume there's meditation. So it's meditation, mindfulness, restorative yoga, we do healing, um, we teach core lessons around well wellness and well-being. Um, and there's other things that I also teach some things around Ayurvedic living and conscious communication. Um, yeah, so there's a whole range of different things that we we look at on our retreats. I've got four different retreats, so three signature retreats um, that offer different things and um, that give people the opportunity to experience different things, but all aimed at topping up your tank, being in a very restorative, um, beautiful, nurturing environment where you get amazing food, food is cooked for the soul and then we have all these lovely experiences as groups and as as a group and also as an individual where we integrate those mindfulness and meditation and yoga and anything that all to do well-being basically all in one place (laughs) and listeners the all the information will be in the show notes to all of Jillian's the retreats the podcast her book it will all be in the show notes. So have a look and also follow her on all social media as well. Um, anything else? Because you're doing so many things at the moment. Uh, you've got, and of course, you've got your coaching. So you're- Yes, because you've still got the coaching. Yes. So everything's, it's, it's you know, uh, that's, I suppose that's, those are my main points for this, for 2023. Um and yeah, so it's going to be an exciting year ahead. I mean, I I turned 50 this year and I couldn't have had the most amazing Yay. year uh, this year, you know, with the book and everything and what I've experienced this year. So I feel tremendously lucky and very privileged to have had the experiences um, that I've had this year. So it feels it's been a very rewarding year. So I'm just going to keep an open mind and see what presents itself in 2023. That's wonderful. But you have worked hard as well. I have, for sure. <laughs> 
really worked hard and that's important guys out there looking for coaching you've got to do the work you have to do the work yes you'll see results like this and congratulations (laughs) once again on your book and the audio coming out in january so this is exciting it is thank you so much so thank you so much jillian thank you Um, it's been so nice to chat with you Thanks so much for listening today. Make sure you subscribe and follow on all streaming platforms. Leave me a comment and also let me know if there's any particular topics you'd like me to discuss. See you next time.